Hey guys, happy snow day. So uh, if you will look at the tasks section, um, it first says to open the note packet that's attached in this email. Uh, so if you could, if you have a printer at home, it'd be great if you can print it out and that way you can uh, fill out the notes as we go along with the PowerPoint. If you do not have a printer, um, then you can fill these notes in uh, later. We will give you a copy of that note packet in class. Um, and you will have this video that you can go back to for what to fill in. The second thing under tasks is very important. You need to email a picture of your homework to your teacher by 11 a.m. So if you're in Miss Ward's class, you need to email Miss Ward a picture of your homework. And if you're in my class, Miss Wirens, you need to email me a picture of your homework. Make sure that this picture is clear enough that we can roughly read your answers because um, we are giving credit on how good the answers are. Um, not accuracy, just that they're um, long and thoughtful. Uh, an announcement that's very important as well, your unit 6.2 test has been moved. So the gold classes, which are the ones watching this video, your test will be moved to Tuesday, January 26th. Uh, we will just do notes the next day of class. Uh, we just didn't want to have the test uh, too close with this snow day. We want to give you guys ample opportunity to come see us um, and ask us questions about the essays that will be on the test. Uh, your homework for tonight is just to prepare for the test. Even though it's been moved, you should still be working on your review sheet. Ms. Ward and, and I will both be available um, via email if you have any questions on the review. So if you look at what we're doing today, the first thing it says is go over essay writing homework. I'm actually going to send you a separate video to go over the homework after 11 a.m. So after everyone has turned in their homework, then I will send out a video uh, going over the homework. So today we are going to introduce bonding, most specifically metallic bonding. So chemical bonding and overview. Um, so in nature, most elements are not found as individual atoms. They're actually found as a combination of atoms. We don't just see one sodium atom. We see a combination of multiple sodiums or sodiums with other atoms. Um, these atoms are held together by chemical bonds. Okay, you probably knew this um, before, but this is just a little introduction to just going. So what are chemical bonds? By definition, chemical bonds are a mutual electrical attraction between nuclei and valence electrons of different atoms that binds the atoms together. Now, from some of your previous science classes, you might know that there are different ways in which the nuclei and the valence electrons are attracting. Um, they can be seen in ionic bonds and covalent bonds. Um, which some of you may know um, covalent bonds are when the electrons are being shared. So there's a different type of attraction than ionic bonds where they're being transferred. But it's still an attraction between the nuclei and the valence electrons of different atoms. So if you look in this picture right here, you can see that the electrons experience a force of attraction because of the positive, negative, positive, or negative, positive, negative attraction. We know that opposite charges attract. So because we have those opposite charges, they are pulling and attracting um, the atoms together, which is our chemical bond. So which family um, slash group of elements is the exception to this? Well, most of you have said this in class before, but it's the noble gases. The noble gases rarely form chemical bonds. We've talked about why this is, and that's because they already, um, can, already contain a full outer shell of electrons. So they're, quote, happy uh, because they already have a full outer shell, which we always say that atoms want to get to a full outer shell. That makes them more stable. To go into a little more depth, now that we know um, some of these periodic trends, we can talk about it in terms of electronegativity. So we know that as we go across the periodic table, our effective nuclear charge gets bigger. Um, so our um, effective charge of the nucleus is stronger than we said, it will pull those valence electrons in tighter. But for a noble gas who has the strongest um, effective nuclear charge um, in its row or in its um, period, if it wanted to gain another electron, that electron would have to be gained in an outer energy level. So that effective charge of the nucleus is not strong enough um, to attract an electron in the next energy level. So it's an uh, basically, its electronegativity is too low to attract an electron in the next energy level. Most of you, most of us already knew that noble gases don't form chemical bonds, but here are some of the extra reasons. 
So um, we're actually going to skip this slide. This was, uh, we were going to have a discussion in class um, talking about what you know about the three different types of bonds. These are the three types of bonds we're going to look at this unit, metallic bonds, ionic bonds, and covalent bonds. Uh, we were going to have a discussion about what you know. Um, so if you'd like, if you have the time, you can pause the video and take a time, take a moment to think about what you know and fill it into those tables in your notes. But we are just going to move on because we can't have a discussion. So today, the only real bond we're going to look at is metallic bonds. Um, a quick definition uh, for metallic bonds is it's the chemical bonding that results from the attraction between metal atoms of the same element and the surrounding sea of electrons. So the first thing um, that's really important to note, and I want you to um, notice it, is it's metal atoms of the same element. So when we have a metallic bond, it's going to be that metal over and over and over again. So I'm going to jump really quickly to this periodic table. So our metals are um, this group one except for hydrogen, hydrogen is a non-metal. Group two, we have our transition metals and we have some metals over here, so our group threes. Okay, so boron, aluminum, and then down under the metalloid. So um, if we had a metallic bond between lithium, for example, it would be lithium bonding with lithium bonding with lithium. You'll never get a lithium bonded to a beryllium or a sodium bonded to a potassium or a sodium bonded to aluminum. Metallic bonds will only form between that atom and itself. So lithium, lithium, lithium. Okay, so going back. Uh, I'm, this next thing it says is um, it's a bond that forms between the metal atoms of the same element and the surrounding sea of electrons. So um, I'm going to kind of do an in-depth explanation based on this picture of what a metallic bond looks like and how it forms. And uh, then we'll go in back in and fill the notes. So if you look, let's say these are lithiums. Okay, and now we looked, lithium would have one valence electron. So if we go back and we look at this picture, all of these guys would have one valence electron. And we know that they want to get a full outer shell. It's a lot easier, and we've talked about this, for it to lose its one valence electron than to gain seven. Because the only other way I could get to a full outer shell would be to gain seven valence electrons, and that's a lot harder. But all of these guys are lithium, and they all have one valence electron, so every one of them wants to lose one electron, but there's no one over here to take it because they're all lithiums. They all want to lose and no one wants to take. So what actually happens is if you can see these V, okay, these black dot, all the black dots represent electrons and the ones with Vs were valence electrons. These are the valence electrons. Then what's going to happen is these metal atoms are actually just going to let go or get rid of their valence electrons and put them in what we're going to call the C. So all of this area is our C. We're creating like a C of electrons. So you can think of these atoms, they're now floating around in this space just filled with all these valence electrons. Okay. Now, um, there's some questions we would have to ask ourselves. Well, what's going to happen to all these guys? Well, they're just going to happily exist. But they're all negative. Now, what do negative things want to do? They want to repel from each other. So why don't they? And then you have these positive, these are now positive cations. They've lost an electron, so all these atoms are now slightly positive, okay? But that's where the beauty of the sea of electrons comes in. All these positive things are attracted to this negative sea. The sea is all negative, and yes, they're, each electron is repelled from one another, but they're moving while the cation is attracted to it. So you can think of the C as moving around because they're all all these little electrons are repelling each other, so they're moving around um, in, in the C, uh, but these cations are attracted to it. And these cations, they're both positive. They would want to repel, but they're kind of stuck together with this glue. We're going to think of the sea of electrons as like the glue holding these cations together. The cations don't want to be next to each other because they're all positive and po like charges repel. But this negative C is like counterbalancing that repulsion by attracting them together. So first of all, let's talk about um, we get a metallic bond uh, when the electronegativity difference is zero. 
Um, so delta En is the difference in electronegativity would be zero because metallic bonding only occurs between atoms of the same element. So if we've got lithium bonding with lithium, they have the same electronegativity. So if we look at the difference between their electronegativities, it's always going to be zero. So if there's absolutely zero difference in electronegativity, that's how we that that's when we're going to form this metallic bond. So let's go back through uh, the notes, kind of going into detail about what I just explained um, broadly. So metal atoms are on the what side of the periodic table? They're on the left side. Um, so they have relatively low ionization energy. And if you remember, ionization energy is the energy required to remove a valence electron. So it takes very little energy to remove an electron. And it has low electronegativity. And if you remember, electronegativity is the tendency of an atom to attract um, electrons when bonding. So um, it's, it has a low tendency to attract electrons. So it's not going to attract. Uh, so both of these combine together to say that um, they tend to lose their valence electrons. So because their valence electrons are relatively easy to remove, they're low ionization energy, they tend to lose their valence electrons. Because metals can't attract new electrons very well, they're low electronegativity. When metal atoms are together, they all lose their electrons and none of them acquire the lost electrons. So the low ionization energy says they lose. The electronegativity says they lose, but it also says they're not going to acquire any that were lost by anyone else. So that's how we form the C of electrons. So we have all these electrons that were lost just stay lost, and they're all floating around freely as the C of electrons. Okay, well, let's look at how they exist after that C is formed. So since the metals have lost electrons, they are now positively charged and are cations. So all of these um, full atoms that we have left all have a slightly positive charge. So since like charges repel, the metal cation should not be able to be close together. So this should want to repel this. However, the electrons in the sea of electrons are free to move around and are weakly attracted by all the different cations as they move. Since opposite charges attract, the electrons in the C allow the cations to stay close together and the metallic bond is formed. Okay, so again, we have um, all these metal atoms. They have low electronegativity, low ionization energy. The easiest thing for them to do and what they will do is they'll lose their valence electrons, but all of them want to do this. No one's going to gain any electrons. So where do those electrons go? They go into the C of electrons. So we now have positive cations that should want to repel each other because they're positive and like charges repel, but they are held together by the freely moving C of electrons. If you remember, the electrons themselves are all negative so they're repelling each other while they freely move around and are attracted kind of as they move to each of the cations. Now as they move the cations don't take them on okay they're just kind of flowing in between um, counteracting that repulsion by the cations themselves. Okay, so that's all we had for today. It was going to be really short. Uh, so I want you to spend any extra time you have today to work on your review sheet for the test that has moved to next Tuesday. And you will be getting a video from me shortly with uh, going over your essay prep homework worksheet. Uh, email me or Miss Ward if you have any questions. If it's specifically about the video, you can email me, Miss Wyrens, um, and I will email, email you. Uh, with any questions. Again, enjoy your snow day. See you guys tomorrow.